The majority of our animals at Fur Kids Animal Rescue and Shelters come from county animal control centers. So a lot of animal controls have to end up euthanizing their animals just because of space. And because it's a county facility, they have no choice but to take animals. They can easily get to capacity. Because we are a private rescue organization and a nonprofit, we can kind of pick and choose what animals we rescue. And because those are very high risk facilities, we try to go to them first. Uh, well, we just recently took in uh, a group of 41 cats that had been, they had been kept in a U-Haul box truck. So not even a vehicle with ventilation or anything like that. And these people were attempting to move them from Florida to Idaho. And they got stopped in South Georgia by the police. And uh, when those animals came in, you know, they were scared, dehydrated. Some of them were pretty skinny and, you know, just not in very good shape. So that's, that's the worst one uh, that I've seen lately. This dog, her name was Juliet. She was an Australian Shepherd, not even five months old. Uh, we brought her in from animal control. She had um, wounds all throughout her back. It looked like an animal attack, I'm not sure. It also kind of looked like bullet holes, but it wasn't, but that's how intense it looked. And there were like live maggots living in her fur and her skin. It was pretty, pretty gross, pretty gruesome. And she growled at everyone she saw. And I actually just took her photo this Friday. It's been three months since then. And all of her hair has grown back. All the wounds have healed. And yeah, she doesn't bark as much anymore. She's still nervous, but. Um, a lot of people kind of send an adoption application for what they think they want or what they think is a good fit, but then with the aid and guidance of myself and other adoption counselors, we try to help them find a good fit. And it also depends on when they come in, the kind of interactions they have with the cats and kittens. So if you know there's a cat that could present itself very well on the website. They could come in and the cat is like very shy and not as friendly as they thought it was. So in that case, we just find another cat. And a lot of times they find one that they do think is a good fit in their home. Um, abuse can encompass a lot of different categories. There's human abuse, animal abuse, emotional abuse. There's a lot of different types of abuse. Um, the worst cases, we do try to send them into foster so they don't have to um, be in a shelter environment. Our shelter environment is wonderful, but it's nice having a human with you as much as possible. That's kind of what I mean by a non-shelter environment. So we do get a lot of cases in which people reach out to us asking us, hey, I found this cat with this kind of problem. And then they ask us, you know, what do we do? In that case, I always redirect them to an email account info at furkids.org. It's run by staff members and volunteers and they're the ones who handle all those questions of I think this cat needs to be turned into you guys or I want to get help for this cat or like I found this kitten on the road I don't know what to do kind of thing so that is the contact info that people should reach out to. When it comes to any animal that looks like it's been abused um, we try to balance medical care with love and affection. This is a sanctuary more than just a rescue or a shelter. We largely focus on rehabilitating the animal physically, yes, but also emotionally. And we really utilize our fosters for that. If an animal is too young to get adopted, too sick to get adopted, we use our fosters to kind of socialize them, rehabilitate them, and care for them in a home environment and not a shelter environment. Um, so fostering is a huge part of the care in addition to medical needs. But then we have our wonderful adoption counselors that work with people. They find out what kind of lifestyle they have or what kind of pet, what kind of pet personality they're looking for and they do a great job of matching people up with uh, the best pets for them. It's more so what cat is this family going to like more. Um, I think that is, I guess, the better way to approach it. Um, I mean, if people send in an application for a specific cat, then of course, first we're gonna go see that cat. Now, it's gotten to the point where 
I've seen, I think, about 10 apps for this one cat because she's beautiful and, you know, her bio is really good. She's a great cat, but I know that when we go up there, she's going to hide in a corner and not want to come out. We have had people who say, I've had cats all my life. I know that that just means they're scared. I want to give it a shot. And they do, and it works out. And with those kind of, you can kind of get a good feeling of when a person is willing to put in the work and when they're willing to be patient. So if someone finds an animal that has been abused or abandoned, their first step would be to kind of evaluate the situation. So for example, if you have a neighbor that you think is abusing their animal or putting that animal at risk in any sort of situation, you need to call the police or contact your local shelter. We are a third party rescue that's private. So we do try to source from counties first before people directly. Now if someone drops off their animal at our doorstep, we can't refuse it and we do take it in, but we do try to direct you first to the county for those types of situations or law enforcement if it's pretty serious.